Episode 45, Worms and Bird's Eggs. Stephen hesitated for a moment before saying, I'll go into hibernation during the cold season. Hibernation during the cold season was the main reason snake beast men's mates had a high mortality rate. He learned from the old legacy teachings that at least half of snake beast men's females died during the cold season. Perhaps letting that leopard stay by Snow's side was the right decision. That was what Blair thought, too. She asked with uncertainty, Then, do you find the water here cold? I'd like you to go into the water to help me retrieve something. Stephen sunk his tail into the water and curled it around a fish basket. With a splash sound, he raised it out of the water. This? Right. This was what I was talking about. Blair happily grabbed the fish basket, then pointed in another direction and said, There are four more. One there, one there, and two over there. Stephen didn't even enter the water, and only had to curl those baskets up with his tail. However, there was one basket that had been flattened. Blair shook the damaged fish basket. There were fish inside, but they were long dead, and the basket was giving off an awful stench. Why is it damaged? Blair asked, feeling it was a pity. Stephen was a little sheepish. Yesterday, when he came, he seemed to have crushed something. Was this the thing he accidentally squashed? Don't cry, Snow. I'll help you make another one, Stephen said. Never mind. This fish basket is great at catching fish, so I think four is enough. Blair shook the undamaged fish baskets, all of which seemed to be filled with fish. By her rough approximation, it was at least double yesterday's quantity. After returning to the house, she poured out the fish and found that it was indeed more than double what she caught yesterday. What delighted her the most was seeing that several of her favorite lobsters were amongst the catch this time. There were several small fish with incomplete bodies, bitten by God knows what. Perhaps if they were to leave this basket in the water, the fish would be able to survive in it. Let me do it today. Roger took the fish from Blair. I've already mastered it. Blair, just go and sit in the grass. I'll call you when the food is ready. All right, Blair said. After Roger went out the door, she started preparing the firewood. Stephen quietly scooped a bowl of rice into the stone bowl, then went to the river, bringing along the bamboo with him. Shortly after, the fragrance of bamboo rice and stewed fish wafted through the air. Stephen skillfully held up the bamboo with two rods and, after poking away the cover on the bamboo, brought it to Blair. Here's Snow. Seeing this, Roger hurriedly handed a pair of chopsticks to her and said, Blair, the fish is cooked. Eat it. Blair took the chopsticks first and instantly felt a coldness emanating from Stephen. She quickly took the bamboo rice from him. I like to eat rice together with fish. The beastmen probably didn't eat this way. Blair was afraid they wouldn't believe her, so she picked up a small fish from the pot, placed it on the bamboo rice, then started eating with relish. As the fish and rice entered her mouth, Blair felt like crying. This was the first decent meal she had had since she transmigrated here. Finally. Roger curiously stared at her for a while, then asked, Does it really taste good this way? It's delicious. Do you want to try? Rice tastes the best when eaten with accompanying dishes. Blair then looked towards Stephen, her tone subconsciously becoming more gentle. Do you want to try as well? No. Roger instantly refused. No way would he touch food cooked by that snake. Moreover, he couldn't bear to eat it, for rice was too hard to come by. Stephen also turned his head away answering Blair's question with his actions. Blair felt that they were missing out. Shaking her head, she said, Such delicacies. It's a pity neither of you wishes to try. Oh well, more for me. As the sun started shining more brightly, the fog dissipated. Roger took out an axe and placed it by his waist on his skirt. He said to Blair, 
It's going to rain for a long time during the rainy season. I'll go out and chop us some firewood. Blair said, chop more willow branches. I'll come with you. If she went along too, she could help to carry more firewood. She heard that during the rainy season, it would rain heavily continuously for three months. They would surely need to stock up firewood. This was no minor task. Roger smiled and said, of course, come along if you wish. The two of them went out the door with Stephen quietly following behind. Walking in the center, Blair could sense other beast men sizing her up. She turned around, looking at Roger and Stephen next to her, and realized with a shock that she was now no different from the females here, going out with an entourage. The three of them went out of the city of Beastmen and came to a thick forest. Roger took out his axe and started chopping the firewood. Stephen glanced at his surroundings, then removed his skirt and transformed into his half-beast form, using his tail to curl around a willow branch, snapping it just like that, causing the trees to shake and make loud rustling noises. The trees in this forest weren't very big and had plenty of branches, which made it convenient for chopping firewood. But many thin and tough tree branches had fallen upon the ground, Blair didn't have shoes on, and her soles weren't as thick as the male's, so it was basically impossible for her to walk. She followed behind Roger and helped to pick up the tree branches, using vines to bind them together. As he chopped the firewood, Roger said, Don't come near me. I might accidentally hurt you. Okay, Blair responded. Only when Roger moved on to chop another tree did she walk over to pick up the firewood. Roger could only let her be. He suddenly spotted something, so he pointed at the root of a tree and said, Blair, this tree is infested with worms. Come here and dig for the worms to eat. Eat worms? Blair wasn't sure she heard correctly. She walked over and took a look. Roger raised his axe and chopped at the root of the tree. Several fat, white worms the size of a finger came tumbling out. Roger raised one up and handed it to Blair. This worm is very nourishing. Hurry up and eat it. I'll help you dig more. Blair was so startled she retreated several steps, tree branches pricking at her soles and causing her pain. She repeatedly waved her hand and said, Ew, I'm not eating that. Don't give it to me. Roger gazed at Blair with pity in his eyes and was prepared to place the worm into his mouth when Blair shrieked out loud and yelled, You shouldn't eat that too. That fat worm wriggled about in Roger's hand. Roger's hand halted about five centimeters away from his mouth. The worm only had to lunge forward and it would touch his lips. Beastmen were probably used to eating such stuff. It looks so scary, Blair said, staring at the wiggling worm. Upon hearing this, Roger instantly tossed the worm away. I won't eat it then. He then stomped the worm to death. Blair's eyes widened as she stared at Roger's foot. She could imagine that worm turning into a pile of goo underneath Roger's foot. You didn't need to do that. You could have just let it go, Blair said. A large tree branch with luxuriant tree leaves fell from the skies. Blair looked up upon hearing the sound. Stephen was coiled around the tree trunk looking down at her. I found eggs... Do you eat them? Stephen asked with uncertainty. He had originally wanted to take them down directly, but when he heard Blair reject the worms that the leopard offered to her, he wasn't so sure anymore. They are similarly sticky foods. Will snow like them? Blair's eyes lit up. She raised her head and walked towards that tree Stephen was on. Yes, what egg is that? Hesitation flashed across Blair's eyes. Then she said... Forget it. This is others' offspring. When you guys hunt, you don't even capture the young ones. Stephen plucked a leaf and folded it into a cone, then picked up the bird's eggs from the nest and placed them into it. Hey, Stephen, don't do that. Blair shook the tree. Stephen only had to move slightly and the tree would shake, but she didn't even manage to budge it by a little. With his tail coiled around a tree branch, Stephen's upper body dropped from above and faced Blair upside down, his long hair drifting in midair. No need to be scared. 
These are eggs from the short-winged bird, and they generally don't hatch. Moreover, they lay one egg per day. Even if you don't eat it, they would peck through the eggshell and eat it themselves. Lay one egg per day? Isn't this a chicken? Just as this thought occurred to Blair, she heard the flapping of wings from the skies. She turned her head towards the source of the sound and saw a colorful pheasant flying towards the bird's nest and maniacally pecking at Stephen's tail. The short-winged bird wasn't the chicken that Blair had imagined, but it could fly very high. But its body was on the heavier side, so it would charge about randomly like a fighting bull. It wasn't as light as birds, and neither could it fly as freely. Its body was mostly brown with some vibrant blue prints. Its tail was long and slim and of vibrant colors, just like a peacock. Irritated from being pecked at by the short-winged bird, Stephen's upper body went up the tree and he was prepared to crush it to death when Blair stopped him. Don't kill it. Let's bring it home and let it lay eggs for us. Okay. Stephen retracted his strength and pinched the short-winged bird's neck with an appropriate force before crawling down the tree and tying it with vines. Beastmen were highly efficient creatures. It didn't take more than 15 minutes before Stephen and Roger piled up a mountain of tree branches. After respectively tying the tree branches into a bundle and placing it on their shoulders, the two of them couldn't be seen anymore. All she could see now were two moving piles of firewood. Holding ten odd eggs, Blair tipped her toes and was prepared to bear with the pain and walk back by herself. She made a mental note to remember to wear shoes next time, even ones weaved from grass would do, else she wouldn't be able to enter the mountains. Stephen tossed out his tail and his voice was heard from inside the firewood pile. Come over by yourself and sit on me. I can't see you. Blair didn't move and merely asked, Would it inconvenience you? Unwilling to be outdone with the firewood on his shoulders, Roger walked towards her. Blair, come over and sit on the firewood. I can manage the weight. Based on his sensitivity towards sound and warmth, Stephen curled his tail around Blair and started slithering towards her. Seeing that Stephen's movement wasn't hindered in any way, she didn't reject his offer. It's all right, Roger. I'm already sitting on Stephen's tail. Roger could only continue walking on glumly. The firewood they chopped this time occupied one-third of the main room. Blair realized that she had belittled the beastmen. At this rate, she figured it would take them less than half a day to fill up the main room and bedroom with firewood. Little female! The rich voice of a male could be heard at the door. Blair, who was squatting down and gazing at the short-winged bird, looked outside upon hearing the voice. It was that brown bear beast man who fought with Roger yesterday. Seeing that the female he fancied already had two males, George could no longer sit still. He had prepared his signature honey barbecued meat, and upon seeing that they had returned, came running over. This is the honey barbecued meat that I prepared. For you. George didn't enter the house, merely extending the barbecued meat with his hands into the house. Blair knew the bear's motive for coming, so she naturally had to reject him. But the instant she heard the words honey barbecued meat, her focus shifted. Honey barbecued meat? Looking at the glazed golden thigh of an unknown animal, Blair's mouth started watering. No males could tolerate seeing other males trying to please their females, especially when their females seemed tempted. 